All right, uh, so two men in a movement. Pastor number one we'll talk about today is a man by the name of J. Frank Norris. Um, just for my own curiosity, who has uh, never heard of J. Frank Norris? Who has not heard of him before? Okay, not a bad answer. Okay. Um, <clears throat> J. Frank Norris um, is often been titled and termed the fighting fundamentalist would be his moniker. If anyone deserves that, he deserves that, that title. So we'll, uh, I'm going to go over his life just briefly. A life of one of his uh, friends in the ministry, and then look at the movement that they both were a part of uh, with the remainder of our time. J. Frank Norris, born in Alabama in 1877. Moved to Texas in the year 1888, and it is Texas that J. Frank Norris is most well known for his time there. In 1903, he graduated from Baylor University, that's in Waco, Texas, with high educational honors. Baylor University was a Southern Baptist sponsored and endorsed University. Four years later, he graduated from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. That was in 1907, and he graduated as the valedictorian of the class. We're going to look at J. Frank Norris um, in uh, about five different areas um, of his life. So first, he was always a pastor. He was always a pastor. For over 40 years, he was the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas. Prior to that, he'd pastored two other churches, but he's most well known for his 40 years at the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas, and for 14 of those years that he was the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas, he was also the pastor of the Temple Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. Those two churches together, yes, I did say that, Texas and Michigan. Those two churches together had a combined membership of 22,000 people. A lot of traveling. And two very capable men at either church to take care of everything while he was at the other place. Louis or Louis Ensminger, E-N-T-Z-M-E-N-G-E-R in Texas, and G.B. Vick in Detroit, Temple Baptist in Detroit, G.B. Vick. These were the church builders, the organizers, the um, Sunday school Builders, <clears throat> under the direction of Norris. So he was always a pastor. Uh, next, he was an editor. He was an editor. And as an editor of Christian periodicals, he was most well known for being a hater of modernism. Dr. Sorensen has alluded to the modernist movement, the liberal modernist movement that uh, really gave birth a couple decades before World War I and uh, <clears throat> grew out of German rationalism, which is really just unbelief, uh, and um, was gaining a lot of popularity, and it was uh, getting quite pervasive before World War I uh, with the idea that if we can let this new belief system in, 
this really social justice, social gospel. We can change the world through the church, through social, the social gospel. We can clean up the crime in the cities. We can take care of uh, all the disease through the social gospel. And it really was very popular and very appealing. And um, <clears throat> World War I put a big damper on the promises of the social gospel and its ability to change society like they said that it could. Um, but in the time leading up to that, <clears throat> it was a force to be reckoned with, with theologically. And so, <clears throat> as an editor, beginning in 1907, J. Frank Norris edited the Baptist Standard. That's a Southern Baptist publication. And then from 1917 to 1921, he edited a magazine called The Fence Rail. From 21 to 27, the magazine he edited was called The Searchlight. The picture on the front of that magazine is of a, a big light shining down, seeking out error to expose it. And then beginning in 1927, the magazine that he edited was called The Fundamentalist. I'm not sure how long that went or when that ended. That could be through his, uh, through his life. He was an editor. He hated modernists, and he used his publications to expose um, uh, the uh, fallacies, as he saw them, of the day, uh, particularly, particularly in the Southern Baptist Convention, since that's what he was most familiar with and that's what he saw clearest. He put the issues into print, and uh, I do believe you can, you can find uh, copies of that and see um, there was lively articles written. He was thirdly a crusader. He was a crusader. He was in a religious war, and that was his life. He crusaded everywhere. He was for right. He was for wrong as, as he saw it. He hit all sins with his pen and with his voice. One issue that he dealt with in messages and in writing was the uh, acceptance of the teaching of evolution into Baylor University. <laughs> that was um, not many institutions of higher learning rejected evolution uh, that, had, that were established. Uh, and uh, Baylor uh, was one of them. And uh, the result of his uh, speaking out and, and preaching against the, this and other compromises going on at his alma mater was that he was kicked out of the Southern Baptist Convention in 1924. There were other men, such as George Truitt, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas. Now today, when you think of Fort Worth, Texas and Dallas, you often hear those put together in the same sense, the Dallas-Fort Worth area or the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're right alongside each other. Uh, both substantial cities, but Dallas, bigger, and the pastor there, George Truitt, and uh, a <clears throat> professor at the Southern Baptist uh, uh, Seminary there uh, was uh, uh, L. R. Scarborough. <laughs> Interesting, he was a professor. He was a professor, professor of the chair of evangelism at Southern Baptist. They had a professor that chaired the department of evangelism at the seminary of that day. These men were hesitant to leave the Southern Baptist Convention. They did not, uh, they recognized problems. I believe that they felt they could try to, to Pull, they were fundamentalists, they were uh, conservatives, um, and they wanted to pull the tide of the convention back in, in the right way. So the result was, uh, if there's a weakness of J. Frank Norris, it was a, um, a lack of respect for other fundamentalists. 
a uh, lack of patience that everyone did not um, move as he moved. And so um, he uh, was um, <laughs> ungracious with, with those that stayed in the Southern Baptist Convention. And um, you, can, you, know, you can look at that two ways. Uh, he wanted them to take a stand for what's right. Um, they were, they probably should have taken a quicker, stronger stand, um, but his, his patience with those not uh, in his uh, uh, mentality at the time was revealed uh, in various ways. So that's, how, that's, that's what he was. So that was uh, maybe a weakness that he had. In 1936, he became the pastor of the Temple Baptist Church. The largest Sunday school in the world was the result. And G.B. Vick was the Sunday school superintendent. And uh, by all intents and purposes, G.B. Vick built that Sunday school to the largest in the world. And we'll see in a little bit the results of uh, G.B. Vick's work and what he uh, did uh, after he and Norris parted ways. Norris pastored Temple Baptist in Detroit for 14 years. In 1950, he was voted out as pastor by a vote of 3,000 to 3. So, when we back away in history, for us, it's just like, ah, oh, they voted him out. <laughs> At the time, I'm sure there was some much emotions involved in that. He was also an educator. J. Frank Norris was an educator. In 1930, he started the Fort Worth Bible School. In 1934, he started the Premillennial Bible Mission School, school for missionaries from the premillennial, um, uh, emphasize the premillennial uh, aspect. That's the title that they gave to it. And in 1939, he started uh, an actual Bible college. I don't know if those meshed together or if it was a separate entity. Um, and uh, he also was involved with a group of a fellowship of churches called the World Baptist Fellowship, the WBF. Sounds like a wrestling Association, the WBF, the World Baptist Fellowship, and they were association of churches that revolved around the ministry of First Baptist in Fort Worth. <clears throat> well, not only in 1950 was Norris voted out as pastor of Temple Baptist in Detroit, also at that time uh, a group of men, part of the WBF, the World Baptist Fellowship, they split off from Norris, and um, they campaigned vigorously to get G.B. Vick to be their leader of their new fellowship, which they titled the BBF, the Bible Baptist Fellowship, the BBF. And reluctantly, G.B. Vick uh, took the headship of that fellowship, probably the most famous uh, church leader that came out of the BBF school. They started the Bible Baptist College in Springfield, Missouri. They also had a BBC East um, in uh, if it's New York or Massachusetts, I forget. Um, but anyway, um, the BBF churches, those that were gathered around G.B. Vick, the, the, the builder of Temple Baptist, really became the, the churches, the, 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 the super churches, the mega churches of the 60s, 70s, and the, even into the 80s. When we talk about the heyday of fundamentalism and the, and the big churches and the big ministries, uh, very many of them, a large percentage of them were BBF churches. Take uh, Landmark Baptist in Cincinnati, uh, large church, John Rawlings. You go to Akron Baptist Temple, uh, Dallas Billington. Uh, you go to, to Cleveland Baptist uh, Church under Roy Thompson. Uh, and, but the most prominent name probably is Jerry Falwell in Lynchburg, Virginia. All these churches came from the, the GB Vic BBF uh, group there. 
and uh, they were uh, very evangelistic, uh, very um, um, outreach oriented, um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll uh, summarize a little bit about them in a little bit. So anyway, um, Norris and Vic, the split, not only was Norris no longer pastor, and it was a, not, a, not an amicable split, uh, also this Fellowship of Churches split um, uh, from the World Baptist Fellowship, the new uh, group that resulted was the BBF. And uh, <clears throat> lastly here, Norris was evangelistic or an evangelist. Though he was always a pastor, we call him here evangelist because his churches really, his sermons were the sermons of evangelists that he would preach in church. Um, we'll read some, a title of one of his sermons in a minute. He had a very powerful, eloquent delivery. Very powerful. You, you saw from his educational background, he was, um, he, he was well-educated and he did well in school. Um, he, he courted controversy. Whether he loved it or not, some have said he loved controversy. I don't know if he loved it. He courted it, though. He desired it. He promoted a controversy. And from the outside looking in, he seemed to like people hating him. Uh, he had that, that um, personality. He had that outlook. He was a great gospel preacher. People came down the aisle and got saved. There's pictures. Um, I looked in the, I thought we had the book. We have it somewhere. Uh, but a, a very fun book to read about J. Frank Norris's life is called The Inside History of, of the First Baptist Church, Fort Worth, Texas, The, the Inside History. And um, it, uh, it's a lot of anecdotes about what happened during those days, about uh, uh, Norris and Ensminger going soul winning together and their escapades while they were out together, uh, the time when he had to bust up a church uh, that was filled with all these little committees, the committee ran church, and how he came in and altered that, and the um, women's group that uh, didn't like him altering that, and the deacons, and they didn't like that, and how that he made change happen one way or the other. Uh, so it's a very interesting uh, re uh, reading. Um, some look at Norris's break from the Southern Baptist Convention as one of the starting points of the independent Baptist movement, of which obviously we're a part today. They look at that break as one of those key, key events that got the independent uh, Baptist uh, movement uh, going. And... Um, he uh, shot and killed a man in his office, um, uh, and it was just he and Norris in the office. Uh, it was true that this man uh, had a beef with Norris, and he'd gone to the office to confront him. Uh, the result was that the man was unarmed, and Norris, he's from Texas, he kept a pistol in his, uh, in his desk, and uh, the man uh, was, was killed. And uh, Norris said he made a move toward either a, what he thought was a gun or something. But ultimately, in the end, it was, there was one witness left, and that was Norris, that he was acquitted um, of that uh, from, any, from any wrongdoing. And I think they took into account the fact that the man had shown some um, um, problems with him uh, in the past. But he never really fully recovered from the, the doubt. Uh, of that, that event when he uh, shot a man in his office. He did help popularize the Sunday school movement in America. It was there, but he really popularized this, getting churches to build through the Sunday school movement to get the grades and get the teachers and have the teachers build those individual classes with their classmates and to, to really focus on that. The, those that followed Norris were often titled the Norris Troublemakers. And uh, there was times the media would not print his name. They would allude to who he was, to where people knew what it was, but they, they didn't want to print his name. Uh, his family uh, faced a lot of uh, backlash for this as well. He was called a fundamentalist showman. Um, uh, he preached on sensational topics. He would announce a sermon 
the uh, day before or even the week before, and the sermon was <laughs> very interesting, and people often gathered to hear, not necessarily because they were going to hear God's Word, they were going to hear this, this special sermon title, and I'll read a couple of those in a little bit. Um, but he did travel. He traveled a lot, and he worked among other churches. He, he, he preached in 46 other states in revivals. And um, he was a uh, very uh, interesting a man. Um, <clears throat> one man said this, He was the prince of crowd gatherers, a paragon of advertisers. advertisers. He is heralded as the Texas Cyclone. And uh, that... Reputation followed J. Frank Norris.